Have you ever been in a relationship where you're constantly asking yourself, am I the wrong one? What am I doing wrong? Why doesn't he communicate to me? Why am I always the one going after him? Why am I begging for attention? I tell you, if you are that kind of person who is in a confused state, this video is for you. You are going to be inspired. I'm going to share with you the story of how I knew my husband was the one when I met him. Hello and what's up guys, welcome back to our channel, it's your girl Precious, as you can see I'm glowing, I'm smiling, your boy Rogers just gave me a best compliment ever, on top of that he gave me his piece of chicken, <laughs> you know me guys, I'm a less complicated girl, if you want to make me happy, if you want to make me or bless me, just buy me KFC, just buy me chicken. Whether it's bright, whether it's boiled, whether it's roasted, I love I live for chicken. <laughs> so you see the glow. He gave me his piece of chicken. That's why I'm happy, guys. Anyways, welcome back to our channel. Uh, as you saw in today's title, I'm going to be sharing with you how I knew that Rogers was the one for me. And before I tell you how I knew, I'm going to tell you a story behind it. The relationship that I was in. And when I met Rogers, I knew he was truly the one. So get ready because this story is going to inspire you. It is going to be educative to you. It's going to open your eyes. By the way, I hope you enjoy and learn something. Mostly ladies, you learn something. Even men, you also learn something. Before we go into it, just click the like button, guys. Please support us. Just click the like button. It doesn't take a second or a minute. That's how you support us to grow. Make sure you drop a comment. Make sure you subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button. It doesn't take a second or a minute. That's how you can support us. So let's get into this story. So guys, before I met Rogers, I was once in a relationship, a long distance relationship, by the way. I was in a relationship with someone who was in Zimbabwe and I was in South Africa. So this is what happened. All this time I was in a relationship with this person, I used to think I was in love. Until I realized that everyone around me was telling me, Precious, this is not love. Precious, you are a slave. Precious, a man who loves you can't treat you like this. But me, I was blinded. There's a thing with people who are in love. <laughs> Guys, you know what I'm talking about. There's a thing with people who are in love. They close their ears like this. They put bricks. You can't advise someone who is in love. Someone who is blinded, blinded by love. That's one thing I know. If you want to know that your advice can't work, try to advise someone who is in love. Mm -mm. They would rather go and do a head on and come back to their senses, but you can't advise them. So, I was receiving every kind of advice, from, mostly from my cousin. He used to tell me, he was actually a guy, he also told me, Precious, I'm a guy, I'm your cousin, I know, this is not love. This boy you are dating, he is so insecure. He, everything about him is weird. I used to say, no, you don't know love. You don't know love. Let me share, you, share with you what was happening in that relationship. Remember, we were in a long distance relationship. We first met in Zimbabwe, then I came to South Africa. So we're in a long distance relationship. So when I went to South Africa, one thing about him, he could call. Not one missed the call, not two missed the calls. He can reach 30 missed the calls trying to reach you in a one go. I used to, when I come back to my phone, I'm like, my dear, have you ever had that, that heartbreak, like, not heartbreak, like fear? You know, you panic when you see 30 missed the calls from one person. I used to panic every time. I tell you, he could call 30 missed the calls. And my cousin was telling me, precious someone who is reasonable, at least they should put one mystical, second mystical. If they can't reach you, they should assume you are busy. But 30, this is not, you answer the 31 mystical. And when you answer it, it's shouting, where were you? What, what, what were you doing? What? You see, the second thing is, guys, if I take any picture, a group photo with my classmates, even when there are boys there, he used to match make me with everyone on that picture. Hey, now you're dating that tall one, that tall one, I'm sure you're dating. Every day I was in a courtroom, guys. I was in a courtroom. It reached the time where my phone was full of screenshots. <laughs> my, my phone was full of screenshots because everything I'm doing, if I miss his calls, I have to send a screenshot. You see, I was cooking, I send a pot. I was washing clothes, I take a screenshot, I send. I was doing this. My phone was full of screenshots of just proving to someone what I was doing. Remember, I was, I was a student. 
even in class they could go. I will not pick after class. I'm in courtroom. I am in courtroom, guys. And for me, I thought this is love. This guy loves me so, so much. I was so blinded. My cousin used to tell me, Precious, you are a slave. You are a slave, but I could not even like get it because I was in love. So one day, uh, I was passing by where there was a party. Right? I was with my cousin. So he told me that I don't want you to go to any parties, to any birthdays, to any functions, anywhere where there is a radio and something, a function. So even if he calls when I'm passing where there is music, guys, the way I could run, I could run like a mad woman just to reach where there is no noise that I can pick the call. My cousin used to laugh. He used to laugh and say, Precious, you are dumb. You are dumb. And I could not see it. I told you, you can never advise someone who is in love. You know what I'm talking about. So the relationship went on and on and on and on and on. And as I was now at university, it reached a time where I had the pressure, guys. I was now in exams. Those who went to school, you know what exams means. I was now in exams. Pressure was mounting me. After having pressure to prepare for test, after sitting on an exam, I go back, I, I end a call of interrogation. What were you doing? Who were you seeing? What, what? It was too much. It started getting into my head now what everyone was telling me. I said, mm -mm. With this guy, we are going nowhere. This is not truly love. I, my eyes started opening because I could not handle the frustration of leaving an exam room, leaving something that was so hard, reading the whole night, and someone calls me just to bash me. No asking me what were you doing. What he knows in his head was the truth. And I could not argue, by the way. When I started arguing, he said, oh, now you're running away from what you were doing, you see. So I made a decision that I am leaving this guy. I told him, it seems like being in a long distance relationship is not working for us. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to pause this relationship for now. I continue with my studies in peace because you are actually giving me a mental disturbance. I am going to pause my relationship with you. I finish my studies like that will continue after, maybe when I come to Zimbabwe. Hey, I knew this was going to happen. I knew you were going to leave me. I knew you were cheating and everything was accusation after accusation guys i made a decision but i made that decision late guys you know sometimes we wait late to end to exit something that is toxic never delay ex exiting something that is toxic it affects even your mental health i left the guy i stayed in my peace of mind guys i told myself i'm not going to date i'm not going to end into a relationship with anyone i stayed single for some time until people started telling me Precious, you're going to die single because that time that's when I started focusing on my life, uh, businesses, I started doing well for myself. You know, I even bought my car. People were saying, Precious, we know you're hard working, you are rich as a student, you are rich, but you're going to die single. I used to say, These people they don't know what they're talking about. Not being in a relationship doesn't mean no man wants me, but I've made a decision to pause for now. That's when I took, I took my relationship with God seriously. I started praying, praying to God for a good man. So guys, now when Rogers came in the picture, this is the reason why I'm telling you I knew he was the one. For, my, for me, these are the signs that I knew Rogers was the one. First of all, Rogers trusted me like no man's business. Have you ever had someone who trusts you and you're like, mm, this person is trust me. You know, I was used to the other. Now I end up here. I'm like, mm, how can someone trust me like this? We will not talk the whole day. And when we talk in the evening, he, he, he knows, he believes I was busy with my studies. He doesn't question me. He doesn't what. He trusted me like no man's business. And I also trusted him. That was the best relationship ever I had in my entire life, guys. The one I had with Rogers. Secondly, he supported me. He was so concerned with my studies. That pressures you on WhatsApp. Are you not supposed to be attending a class? Are you not supposed to be in an exam? Are you not supposed to be doing this? He always supported me. He didn't accuse me of anything. He was like, what are you doing now? How can you expand your businesses on campus? Do you need any help? He was so supportive. By the way, there's something that a verse that I now see is true in the Bible. The Bible says when God gives you something, he doesn't add no sorrow. God gives riches and addeth no sorrow. He can't bless you with something and that thing brings sorrow, frustration, depression, mental health to you. No, that's not God. When God gives you something, you have to enjoy it. Rogers was so supportive, guys. 
and I stopped lying. Because in my previous relation, I used to lie. I used to create any single, I became a, a serial liar. I used to lie even on things that doesn't need lying. But when I started dating Rogers, when I was in a relation with Rogers, I stopped the lying. I could tell him, you know what, Rogers, my boyfriend, we have a party. We have a birthday party for our friend. I'm not going to be available in the evening. So we'll not talk today, we'll talk tomorrow. You say it's okay, enjoy it on my behalf. Can you imagine? I used to like, oh, this might be a trip. Is he really meaning it? As we moved on with the relationship, I saw that, no, he meant it. If I tell him there's a birthday party I'm going to attend, you allow me. You even tell me we'll talk tomorrow himself. If I tell him there's a Miss uh, Miss Forte, Miss University, what, what on our campus, you tell me go and enjoy. Do you need any money? Do you need me to send anything? I tell him, no. Because those days I was working, guys. I, had, I used to have money. To have money. I will tell him something and he approves it, right? I don't even need to lie or to create any lie. I used not to. I said it's not lying. But in the previous relationship, I became a serial liar. Any single thing. I could lie. Lies were in my mouth. But with Rogers, I stopped lying. I could just tell him what is happening. I would tell him, you know what, sweetheart, my boyfriend, I have a friend who is coming for sleepover. One of my female friends is coming for sleepover. Can we talk tomorrow? He tell me it's okay. Enjoy your, enjoy your evening. Enjoy your evening. You need it. You need that rest. You need to, you know, to refresh. Just like that, guys. And one person who pushed me to pray also, one thing I knew that Rogers was the one. He pushed me to know God more and even pray more. There was no single day we enter a call in the evening to talk and we don't pray. We used to pray like never before. We would talk our romantic stuff after that we say let us pray. We read the word of God. We actually used to give each other chances. Today we sharing the word of God. Tomorrow he shares. We, we, we preach together. We share the word then we prayed. I tell you guys, we used to pray. I'm sure that relationship was built on a good foundation of God. I tell you, we used to pray every time. That was our food. Until it became normal that if we don't pray, we don't feel normal. So, to, to, to show you that Rogers actually pushed me to know God more. The time I came in 2021 to see him before he comes to, to Zimbabwe to pay Lobola. Guys, I reached the year saying, I'm going to see my boyfriend. I'm going to enjoy Ugandan food. When I reached, he told me we are entering into 40 days of fasting. Our church has 40 days of fasting. Guys, I ended the, almost my time here. I was in fasting. Every single day I was fasting. He said, no compromise. We are fasting. We are breaking at 4 p.m. We have to pray. And since I was a born again and a Christian, I said I could not deny. I wanted to say, no, no, no. But he said, it's okay. If you don't want to fast, it's okay. But me, I'm fasting. But I saw that it wasn't proper not to fast. So I fasted. That's how our relationship was, guys. And guys, one other thing, Rogers he had something happening in his life. He was also busy with something. You know, it's it's very dangerous to date someone who is not doing anything. Someone who just spends maybe most of their time on Facebook. They're following current stories in the country. They are just there. They don't have anything to do. So they will bother you like no man's business. They are always on your neck because they assume things because they are not busy. They are not doing anything. But with Rogers, he was also busy building his life. So even time to quarrel what he didn't have it. Me, I was also focusing on my life and my studies. So he had something happening in his life. I'm not saying Rogers was perfect, guys. You know, there's one thing that I realized. If you are looking for a man in your life to date, if you wrote your qualities, if your boyfriend at least marks 70% of the important, the basic needs you need in a man, and if the 30% are imperfections, you have to go with that. You know, everyone is not perfect. Rogers had his imperfections, but his imperfections were lesser than what, than his perfections. And also, there are certain things I saw that, you know what, this I can live without, this I can live without. I wrote qualities in a man that I wanted. And when I found Rogers, he covered 80% of everything I needed. The 20% wasn't necessary. I had wrote, I want a man who had muscles, who goes to gym, who does this, this. But when I saw that he has 80% of the things that are important, this one I ignored them, by the way. So no one is perfect. So this is my advice to someone who is out there, who is confused. Who is confused? What should I do? Does this man love you? Are, you are entering from one inbox to another saying, my boyfriend does this. Is this normal? You are in a confusion state. You don't know what to do anymore. This is my advice to you. 
when the right man comes in your life confusion goes guys there is no better way to explain this when the right man comes in your life confusion totally goes also you don't beg for attention in a relationship that every time you're looking for this person hey why are you ignoring me why are you what you don't beg for attention when you're with someone who loves you you don't beg for communication that yeah he's not talking to me we haven't talking in a week he maybe he's busy you don't beg for communication when you're with the right person for you you don't beg for communication you don't beg to be valued by the way people you know i've met girls who tell me precious hey my boyfriend is busy we only talk once in a week maybe after two weeks is this normal do you consider it normal we always fight every time i told i used to tell some of these ladies that people choose to value what they value people value what you know they prioritize what they value more so if you see they're not giving you attention you are not one of their priorities there is no way you can explain to me and convince me that i haven't talked with my boyfriend for a week or three days or what and you you have a better explanation he's busy you even cover up his tricks there's nothing like that you're always confused does he love me does he not love me is he cheating is he what just know that when god blesses you with something he added no sorrow when i ended the relationship with rogers i knew he was the one because everything became clear there was light in my life no lying no nothing he valued me Com communication was not a problem attention was not a problem everything started flowing I knew he was the one. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, guys. Just click the like button. It doesn't take a minute or a second. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Help us to grow, guys. When you subscribe, you are helping us to grow. And don't forget to put a comment. If you don't have anything to say, just say, Hi, Precious. Hi, Miss Mawete. I'll be able to respond. That will help us to grow. Comments, they bring engagement. Or even put loves. It's very fine. It will help us to grow and push our videos far. I hope you find this video informative, guys. We love you so much. See you in our next video.